this time on Disrepair, we are amped about this episode. We finally find an engine to put in this brat. Motor. We loaded the Subaru in the trailer. We're driving eight hours to haul this thing down to my little brother's house. And uh, he says he's got a motor for us. This better be good. So last time you saw the brat, you remember that the uh, engine totally destroyed itself, full milkshake. So we chunked that thing in the trash and we're trying to find a better, more powerful engine for it, so. But before we could put a new motor in it, of course, I had to make it look better on the outside. So I went ahead and finished up the last of the paint and body on the exterior. One of the criteria was that we had to keep it four wheel drive. My little brother promised me he found something that's twice as powerful and still maintains the four wheel drive. Well, we must be at the right place. There's a Brad. So uh, tell me about this motor. You said it gets like better gas mileage, like, and uh, makes more power. It's smaller fits in the engine compartment, all those things. What if I told you infinite miles to the gallon? Uh, what is it, like fusion or rotary? Perpetual motion? Oh, I have no idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Um, Becoming a much more popular motor swap. So this is a popular motor swap that I've never heard of. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a, like a mini V8. Why would I give you eight? when I could give you nine. Oh my goodness. What is this thing? This is a Hyper 9 electric motor. Oh my sweet Jesus. That's rad. Tell me a little about this uh, electric motor. Well, this Hyper 9, well, the 172 foot pound of torque, and that's instant torque. Okay. So you press the gas pedal, you're moving. So the original Brad, if I remember right, it had like 67 horsepower and like 80 foot pounds and yes yeah, double the torque right out of the gate oh wow okay so, so as long as we don't break the transmission this thing will scoot <clears throat> obviously this is the electric motor and you have this attaching to the transmission somehow tell me how you did yes that. this is an adapter that was made to bolt the original the bell housing from the transmission to where it would have bolted to the original motor okay so it has an output shaft coupler in here that attaches the the clutch or the flywheel and the clutch to this motor, and then this plate attaches it to the original transmission. So the reason the adapter's so wide because on the super motor, the flywheel sets back and the clutch sets back further, so we had to, to, to add four inches in here to allow for the difference. But this is the, the original clutch and flywheel in there. We removed the ring gear because obviously you don't need that, but uh, it should bolt directly to the transmission. What's gonna power the motor? Well, the, that's the, uh, the expensive part. Yeah, these are these are Tesla modules from like a Tesla Model S. Okay. So they're 444 cells all hooked together. Ultimately create a uh, about 22 volt battery, and they have um, maybe you know, 22, 24 volt, and they have um, 53 kilowatt. Yeah. Okay. So to get a car like this to move, you have to hook enough of these modules up to get enough voltage to power the motor. Okay. Which is five of them. Five, five of these. Five of these modules. So you see these modules, they're pretty big. I mean, you look at how large these are. We're gonna have to find a place to stick all these in the Subaru. And I don't wanna stick any inside the car. I don't want them in the bed. I want them to all be in the car and none. completely hidden. That's right. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Well, that's the beauty of the Brat, is since it's a pickup slash car, there should be some room probably where the gas yeah. tank goes, so things like that. How much do these batteries weigh? These batteries are about 55 pounds a piece. 55, so five of them. Yeah. 55 times five. That's right. So like 275 pounds of battery. Mm -hmm. uh, no way to fit, figure out. And um, you can't, you see, they can't just be exposed to the elements. So we're gonna have to enclose them somehow. The other cool thing about these batteries is they're liquid cooled. So Tesla figured out after enough cars caught on the fire, I, <laughs> that you gotta control the temperature of the batteries to get the maximum life out of okay. them. So actually it has these coolant ports here. So you have a pump that pumps coolant through these batteries. Let's get our PPE on, get this thing on the lift, 
and get this build started. And the first step is going to be to remove all those unnecessary components. But that'll have to wait for next time. See you next episode of Disrepair.